I am Prof. Nirmal Gupta, Head of Cardiovascular and Thoracic Surgery at Sanjay Gandhi Postgraduate Institute and your lecturer for the class of today. This is a very special class. I feel that many of the students who come and join Cardiothoracic Surgery either in the MCH or a DNP program long for doing an sternotomy. However, this sternotomy comes a long way away, maybe after six months to one year following their joining. So I thought of taking this basic lecture for you to demonstrate the skill that are required, which are very basic, simple and easy to do uh, in a 20 minute short video of performing the sternotomy safely, neatly and closing it securely. So the following lecture, which you will see yourself, will explain to you how to perform a perfect median sternotomy and close it securely. I hope you'll enjoy that. Please provide me the feedback at the bottom of the screen that you will see in the lecture and that will help me to make more of such basic lectures for the preliminary students of cardiovascular and thoracic surgery. Good luck with it. So before we start the stenotomy, we mark the landmarks and the landmarks are the suprasternal notch the clavicle, the xiphoid process, the ribs on the right and the left side and this is basically for students to understand that and this is the manubrial external joint to stay in the midline and to make a cut which is exactly in the center. Now I normally do not cut using the diathermy because it will burn the skin. So I go and I also recommend to use diathermy only at the bleeding points like I am doing there right up to the sternum and then the dissection is done in the midline and in the suprasternal notch taking care of the midclavicular vein which is there interclavicular vein. You cut the periosteum right in the center with your index and the thumb finger of the left the intercostal spaces. Periosteal bleeders are also buzzed using a coagulation setting of 40. The smoke is sucked and the bleeding is also sucked with a fine sucker. Now below the xiphoid the fascia is cut in the middle and using a scissor you cut the xiphoid process. After cutting the xiphoid process one should also take care that sometimes there is this vein which can bleed profusely fortunately it wasn't there here and then you put your finger behind the xiphoid process and tear to the diaphragm and make a little space before you start sawing the sternum with the sternal saw. Keep the sternal saw little traction upward so that the underlying pleura and the pericardium is not damaged. After this you use very minimal amount of uh, bone wax to stop the periost uh, bone marrow bleeding from the sternum. Then you burst the periosteal bleeder with the diathermy setting of quag 40. The assistant at this time holds the sternum above and below so that you can see the entire external length. A small amount of blood will be absorbed by the sponge that you have already placed. I use two swabs before I place the external retractor so that it does not fracture the sternum and that's how the sternum is cut in the middle. Assistant now retracts the skin from the upper part of the sternum on both sides because there will be or maybe some bleeders, periosteal bleeders which might still require coagulation. This completes the sternotomy. Now the sternal closure begins. In this operation we can see that the pleura on the right and the left side both are open and I am explaining when you put the pleural drain the direction of the drain should be such that it goes over the diaphragm that is the bottom part below the lung 
so that whatever collection takes place uh, comes out of the drains. If you put the drain straight, then the drain may not be draining properly. So you make the cut on either side of the sternum, take two stitches, one to fix the tube and other one is a mattress suture which will help to close the wound when the drain comes out next morning and uh, both holes are made and with the help of a long forcep or instrument called Roberts, we call it Roberts forceps, you place the drain at an angle so the major part of the drain lies below the lung into the pleural space but over the diaphragm on the right and the left side that you will see now this is the Roberts so the drain is pulled through the wound and then the drain is placed under the lung with the help of your left hand below the lung but over the diaphragm on the left side now this drain will drain adequately anything that trickles down from the mediastinal space in case of open heart surgery uh, some bleeding will take place in the mediastinum you fix the tube fixation suture around the drain so that the drain does not slip out the danger of drain slipping out will be the pneumothorax because once the drain slips out for some reason the pneumothorax will bother you and the patient of course so you make sure that the drain is fixed properly before you decide to pull that out the same thing you do on the left side as you have done at the right side and the mattress suture is wrapped around the tube you just saw. Now you place a large sponge behind the sternum that is to protect the underlying heart and then you check how much width of a sternum you have so that you can decide upon whether you are going to uh, put your sternal wires through the substance of the sternum or through the intercostal spaces around the sternum. In cases where the sternum is very weak, then you can put the wires in the intercostal spaces, then you will get more substance of the sternum which will hold the wires properly and not cut through. But if the sternum is strong, in a, as a, in a young man with a wide sternum, you can put the wires through the substance also. Now, care must be taken in those patients who have uh, pulmonary disease, emphysema, and bad cough uh, that you should take the sternal wires uh, through the intercostal spaces to get a strong sternal closure. Sternal dehiscence is the major complication if the wires cut through because of chronic cough. So you pass the I normally use five to six wires to close the sternum because the Indian patients are smaller in size. However, if the patient is above uh, 70 to 80 kilo, then one should use three wires on the uh, upper part of the sternum and four to five wires in the lower part of the sternum. One sternum sternal wire is sufficient for zephyr process and is always not necessary. this is how you put the sternal wire always make sure that your sternal wire needle goes vertically down so that the wire will have less chance to cut through in case patient makes movement lifts the weight soon after the surgery despite our uh, advice the wire can also bleed the surface bleeding on the sternum can be seen very easily and can be dealt but underneath the sternum these wires can also bleed this is the sternal wire cutter which is used to 
um, cut the wire now here you are seeing that the assistant is cutting all the wires from the middle but some surgeons prefer to put figure of eight in that case you leave one loop alternately and then twist the wires in such a way that one loop will make a figure of eight closure I do not prefer that unless I have decided that this patient is not for a redo for any reason that will be defined by his clinical situation. Now here there is the manubrial external joint one should not pass the wires through that because that is the weakest point but this is the manubrium body of the manubrium and you must pass the not try to put the wires uh, in the intercostal spaces here because they are very narrow and they can damage the internal mammary artery so you should always pass the wire through the body of the sternum passing the wire the same rule applies that you pass your needle vertically down rather than tangentially because if you put the tangential wires uh, they will surely cut through the external body and you can have the danger of uh, sternal dehiscence now this patient is a small patient therefore I am using only two wires through the sternal body and if he was a heavy patient I would have used instead of two three wires in the body of the manubrium after the wires are pulled you do the same thing you cut now I'll show you how to pull that swab that you have placed underneath the wires easily without disturbing your structures say for example a heart in cases of open heart surgery fortunately this patient is not in open heart surgery so we have placed five wires <clears throat> now what you do you put your fingers it's very it's not easy to pull that swab without disturbing the heart so you pull the wires with your finger make a loop and then you can easily pull that swab out now is the time to check whether we have some bleeding underneath from the wires that have come from below so you place another swab and this will give you some idea if any wire is bleeding that swab will become red in that area you take a small 4x4 four four swab and mop the exit of the wire underneath on the left side and and the point where the wire has gone in from the right side and this will confirm that there is no bleeding in underneath and you have not uh, damaged any intercostal perforator or internal mammary artery underneath while placing these tunnel wires the same thing is done on the right side you can also see that the wires are dry the lung is intact that your wires have not damaged any vital structures underneath and there is no uh, arterial bleeding now you pull both wires together up because sometimes you can leave a little loop underneath which is not good because then that after twisting you will not know that there is a loose loop underneath the sternum and which will make the sternal closure unstable so after you have done this thing uh, your assistant pulls the top two wires and you alternately twist these wires at least two and a half to three twists you make and this will help you to make a very firm and secure sternal closure I prefer to put this twist twisted wires in the center of the sternum where the sternal split has been done so that after bending these uh, wires you put them in the space which has been created by the cut sternum the reason for doing this is because Indian patients do not have a very uh, thick chest wall over the sternum and uh, sometimes these thin patients can have problems of jutting out of the sternal wire points out of the skin later after some time and that will cause a lot of morbidity and sometimes even infection or sinuses 
on the over the chest wall these sinuses can be a great nuisance not only for the patient but also for the surgeon uh, the i uh, the art of twisting this wire is that you pull you can see that the patient chest is pulled up because when you do this maneuver the entire wire is pulled up and there is no loose loop underneath the sternal body and this will help you uh, to twist the wires easily without breaking them one should also remember that one should not break the wires while twisting too much otherwise uh, you will have to do the entire exercise once again after cutting the other wires you cannot leave the patient with four wires if you break one of them uh, here i am showing you how to push that uh, uh, sternal wire knot uh, in the split position a very technical point many of the patients will have incisional hernia in this region which i am showing with my finger because the sheath rectus sheath is there and this is the rectus abdominis muscle uh, which has been cut in the middle so one should remember that to fill in this space is very important otherwise the patient can in the long term have incisional hernia many patients do have if this thing is ignored so one should take that rectus sheath very carefully and rather than putting these sutures into the muscle because muscle if you take the sutures in the body of the muscle then muscle will go under necrosis and a necrosed muscle is always a very weak tissue so one should put these sutures only in the sheath and not in the muscle because rectus sheath is a very firm structure and it is uh, it is not as vascular as the muscle is and therefore it will heal with further fibrosis and which will make that area very strong and patient will never have an incisional hernia at least i have not experienced incisional hernia in my practice over the last 20 years by taking care of this particular uh, point in my surgical career now i normally uh, do not take the tissue except the periosteum in the first layer and i try to cover uh, the this is the periosteum i'm explaining and i try to cover the wires as much as i can it may not be possible completely but i will try to cover with my periosteal layer suturing the wires so that once the periosteum is over the wire the muscle bone will be laid down by the periosteum and the wire will go further into the uh, bone and will not be able to jut out of the thin subcutaneous and skin uh, over the sternum in the long run so as you can see i am taking only the periosteum and not the muscle in the first layer in the second layer would be the subcutaneous tissue which will go over the periosteal layer and the final layer uh, would be the um, the subcuticular uh, skin closure which should be done neatly because this is the part that you are seeing and i am seeing but the patient will only see the skin closure now uh, another important point here many of you must have seen that uh, there is at the top of the open heart surgery patients you will see a little bump at the top of the sternum and that is because i'll explain to you this kind of a bump you might have seen in some of your patients and that is because when you are closing the sternal tissue you inadvertently take the stripe muscles and that is the sternocleidomastoid that is joining the sternum so if you do that obviously it will make a little bump because the direction of the muscle is set different than the direction of your incision and that is what causes this bump so what you do you just simply close the tissues over the uh, sternum and little bit of sheath where the suprasternal notch is rather than the stripe muscles the hole underneath that will drain into the mediastinal space and that will that blood will come out through your drains either from the pleural side or from the 
the drain behind the sternum that you have just closed so you can see that I am not taking the muscle only the uh, fascia over the muscle and this will avoid creating a bump the second layer as I said would be subcutaneous tissue and that is not very tight layer it is only to close the dead space now you can see that there is no bump over the suprasternal notch so this tissue layer is only approximating layer and not the very tight one because if you make it very tight closure here uh, the tissue becomes ischemic it dies it becomes a nidus a dead tissue becomes a nidal along with the blood for infection and many of your patients will have uh, oozy wounds sternal wounds or infection sometimes but if it is only approximating uh, layer then the wound will uh, not have collection and yet it will have vital tissue living tissue which will heal in due course of time so after doing this layer you simply put the subcuticular stitches like has been shown here you always try to bury the last point underneath the skin so that uh, that stitch never needs to be taken out so thank you very much for watching this video and i hope this will be helpful for those students of mch and dnb who come and join cardiothoracic surgery after seeing this they will be much more confident of performing a stenotomy soon after they join maybe after a few weeks which normally they don't get even after six months of their exposure in departments thank you very much